It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Boston Pride NWHL slash PHF team president, Colin Coyne. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to work in professional sports? Yeah, you know, um, honestly, I, to be honest with you, Brandon, I didn't know I wanted to work <laughs> in professional sports. Uh, I had a lot of jobs after playing hockey in high tech in the corporate world and i knew i missed being in the sports world uh but never really put much thought into navigating my way back in uh but uh this this opportunity kind of happened upon me and um you know i i saw it as as a great opportunity and just took took advantage of it what was your time like being an olympian (laughs) um it's so hard to describe um, you know, it's such a short time, first of all, uh, you know, you were training an awful lot leading up to that as national team players. Uh, but it's only a couple months before the actual tournament that you're selected for the team. So it's a short window that you're actually, you know, an Olympian leading up to that, but it's, it's just one of those experiences that is so unique and, um, you know, with having, that type of experience with people that are like family after a while, because you just spend so much time with them is, um, is pretty unique and pretty special. So it was, uh, it was a time that I'll certainly uh, never forget. What was it like being a USA hockey athlete and also coaching the USA hockey team? That was an interesting transition. So I was a player for about six or seven seasons uh, on the national team, I guess, six seasons. Um, and that, you know, so I knew a lot of those players, uh, for a long time as a a teammate and then, uh, to make the transition to uh, a coaching role was, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it was definitely different. You know, there was definitely, it was a time of a lot of, um, you know, desire change from the team. The team was, uh, you know, having discussions about how they could make things better, for the program for women, for young girls coming up. And, um, you know, I was on uh, the coaching side of that, which um, I wouldn't say was the opposite side, but it was a, it was an interesting time since, you know, I I very much aligned with their way of thinking, um, but wasn't necessarily part of the conversation. So. What was it like for you to go from obviously coaching the U S hockey team to now being a team president for a professional hockey team? So it huge gap, right? There's a huge gap between the time that I was coaching and and the time that I took this job. So there's uh, there's probably a lot I don't remember, but I think that the biggest difference is that I don't spend a lot of time thinking about you know what's happening on the ice. I, I leave uh, those concerns to our general manager and our head coach and you know coaching staff. Um, I certainly pay attention, but I don't like, uh, you know, how, how things are going and are the players happy and do they have what they need type things. But, um, but that's the biggest difference is when you're coaching so much of it is on ice strategy and, uh, you know, getting to know your players in that capacity. And when you're on the front office side of things, it's much more around the business of hockey and, you know, how do we make, how do we take what we have and, and grow it? Of course, speaking about the business side of hockey, what are some of your roles and responsibility as team president? So, um, you know, I sort of mentioned like overseeing that the hockey operations side of it. um, And then there's the the business side of it. So it's it's really about growing the sport and trying to uh, find um, new and, uh, you know, influential supporters, uh, sponsors, partners. Uh, things that will help us, um, you know, bring in the revenue that we need to become uh, what we're all hoping, which is, you know, um, a, a sustainable uh, league where players 
can make a living just playing hockey. So, so you may or may not know that most of our players have sec, you know, have second jobs, and that's just the the nature of where we are right now. Um, you know, we pay them well, but not enough for them to uh, not have other jobs. So the the goal is to get to a place where all these women have to do is focus on hockey, and um, that's a big part of my job is is helping to get to that place. Of course, being team president, what was the transition like from going from the NWHL to the new league, the PHF? Yeah, that's a good question, too. I got that a lot, especially when it first um, when it first changed. So, you know, I think our commissioner. um, Hang on one second. Sorry. I think our commissioner and. um, You know, all the people, the the owners, they all had. conversations around rebranding and you know does it make sense to rebrand um and what are the what are the pluses and minuses of that right because it's it's there's definitely both um but from my perspective as as team president uh it didn't really change much it's really just about um understanding that this was a step that was taken to help us get to where we want to go you know and there's a lot of things that went along with that um and you know including uh you know raising raising the w and trying to get trying to get people to focus on the fact that we're professional hockey players and not necessarily feeling like it needs to be qualified in any way um based on gender of course being team president can you talk about of course the culture that you have helped build with the general manager in the program yeah, so both Danielle and I are new. Uh, so I started in April. She started after me. So, um, you know, a lot of it is, is I think, you know, my approach anyway, when you come into a situation like this where there's uh, an existing uh, group of people and they all get along very well and they're just coming off a very successful year is to kind of, um, you know, observe and, and not try not to interrupt too much and just see how things uh, go. And then, you know, work with the head coach and, and of course, uh, Danielle to make sure that, you know, whatever, whatever they did last year, we're able to uh, replicate in the sense that, you know, it brings, um, it brings the best out in each player so that when they hit the ice, uh, they're able to perform at the highest possible level. Of course, speaking about that coming off of last year and obviously Buff- Boston Pride won the Isabel Cup. What was that like for you to take over that team after the Isabel Cup win? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's it's one of those things where you just try to, again, just try to, uh, you know, move in and acclimate and not interrupt too much. But at the same time, you know, it's still so early. We just played our first two games um, and obviously they, they, they went well, uh, but it, it's so early for me to try and, you know, really get a sense for what how we're doing. Right. We've had one really great weekend. Um, we had a, we had a strong preseason, but it's you know, it, it, it'll be a little bit before, you know, I get a sense for what changes I may or may not want to make uh, inside the club. It could be, you know, just a matter of letting things roll the way they are, assuming that there's no big problems along the way and then having a season under my belt to, you know, think about that for season eight. What is it like, obviously, seeing your new players like Kaylee Fracken and Julian Dempsey obviously perform at the top level? Well, those two, yeah, they're uh, they're the old veterans, aren't they? Um, they're fantastic, you know, and it's much more it's much more than what they're able to do on the ice. You know, they're great leaders for the team. Um, they are both, uh, you know, captains, alternate, alternate captain. Um, and that that's sort of the most impressive part of them, if you ask me. I mean, both of them are outstanding hockey players, obviously, but um, really the way that they conduct themselves day to day and um, and treat the team, lead the team. Those are the things that um, I find most impressive about those two players. What is the typical game day like as obviously you just got through your first two games? So what is the typical game day like now with Boston Pride? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's anything typical about it, Brandon. They're all different. Um, certainly the first day was 
uh, a, a learning day for everybody, almost everybody involved. There were very few people on deck there that had been through uh, setting up for uh, and preparing for a game day uh, in the past. So Saturday was, you know, a little uh, hectic getting prepared and making sure we all understood like what roles uh, we were fulfilling and making sure everyone was in their places and everyone had what they needed um, for like national anthem and uh, you know, the team at Warrior Arena is really helpful in making sure all that stuff goes smoothly, too. So um, to, to sort of more directly answer the question, you know, you get to the arena a couple hours ahead of game time and then just make sure uh, there's a very detailed timesheet that is uh, that we that we go by. Um, it's uh, being on ESPN Plus this year has required us to run a very tight, very uh, precise timeline leading up to the game. The, the puck has to hit the ice um, at puck drop to kick off the game at exactly three minutes past the hour. And so we have, you know, a certain allotted amount of time to fit in the national anthem, to fit in the starting lineups, to fit in a, um, a commemorative uh, puck, puck drop if we want to do that. Um, we did the banner unveiling on Saturday night. So, you know, we basically have, um, you know, a certain amount of time allocated where we have to try to fit all that stuff in so that when uh, the clock hits three past the hour, whether that's 7.03 on Saturday night or 2.03 on Sunday afternoon, and the puck hits the ice, it's three, it's three minutes past the hour. Of course, as team president, what was it like obviously seeing that banner go up on Saturday from your team? Well, it really is something I want to see again, right? Because uh, that is very much the product of last year's team and efforts um, and what they had to overcome in a very difficult year given COVID and everything that went on with that. Uh, so that's um, their uh, great accomplishment that I like to celebrate and honor. But, uh, you know, I, I look forward to the day when I'm able to uh, see a banner go up that I was a part of. What are some things that you plan to accomplish, obviously, with the Boston Pride? Um, I think just continuing to, uh, you know, our, our team is obviously outstanding on the ice. They all work very, very hard. You know, we have such a great platform to, um, to take into our communities and really start to make an impact uh, with the, you know, whether it's young kids, um, you know, or anyone, businesses, um, you know, our, our players are, uh, they're multi-talented. So, uh, you know, the potential for them to go into the community and, and make an impact on those people and leave an impression is great. And obviously that would be, uh, that's a great way to go about um, growing our fan base as well. Of course, what is the fan atmosphere like and the fan base like, obviously, since you've taken over? Uh, I think, you know, our fans were eager to get back to the rink. It's been a little bit since they've been able to watch the team play live. So uh, it's a great atmosphere. Where do you live, Brandon? Of course, in North Carolina. Ah, okay. Um, well, someday you'll have to make a trip up and catch a, uh, catch a Boston Pride game. Um, so, yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, the, you know, we usually have a couple teams, uh, young, young hockey teams in the stands that are, you know, screaming and cheering. And, you know, we've got a great fan base and we try to keep it entertaining uh, at the intermissions and, um, we, uh, you know, we're just trying to continue, um, continue to build on what we have uh, for, for a foundation in terms of our fan base. What are some things that you plan to implement in Warriors Arena for your fans? So it's an interesting, you know, at Warrior, um, we, we build things up uh, for the game weekend. And then, you know, the Warriors, a uh, an arena that has many other events in it. So we kind of build it up for the weekend and then we take it down. Um, but, you know, we really want when, when fans walk into warrior for a pride game, we, you know, we want them to, to really kind of feel who we are. So things that, you know, we'll see in the future are, you know, just big imagery, a lot of imagery. I'm looking for like, you know, big pictures of our players in action um, we definitely want to find ways to engage our younger fans in games and activities between periods, little games that we'll have up on the concourse. Um, and other than that, you know, we could, you know, we've got concessions that continue to get better. Um, you know, interaction, 
at, during TV timeouts, some some activations where we can toss some some stuff into the the stands so people can go home with a little uh, a little souvenir. Uh, really, just trying to make it a family uh, friendly and really fun environment that people want to come to time and again. Of course, what advice would you give people looking to become team presidents of a professional hockey team and even women's hockey league? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's a definitely a, a you know you have to be passionate about it. The um, the time you put into it isn't you know certainly not nine to five. So, um, you know, you'd, you'd want to make sure that uh, you're in a position where you're able to put the time in that's needed. And then, I, you know, for me, it's anyone who loves the game, anybody that's, you know, intelligent and loves the game can learn the role of president. Um, you know, it's a lot of that is what I'm doing now. I've never been a president before of a sporting team or anything. So there is a lot to learn and, um, you know, definitely to surround yourself or, or call on people that you know with experience. Use your friends that have experienced, uh, you know, leadership roles before. We have a great owner, a uh, great team of owners. Um, our chair, of course, um, Miles Arnon is a great mentor um, in helping me, you know, focus on the things that I should be focused on as a president uh, to continue to improve um, the fan experience and attract more sponsors. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Boston Pride app? I am at Colleen Coin pretty much everywhere. At Colleen Coin on Twitter, Instagram. That's how you find me on LinkedIn, I think. That's how you find me um, uh, on Facebook, although I'm not on Facebook a lot. Um, and then uh, the Boston Pride is usually the, you know, that'll be the handle that you'll find um, on Twitter, on Instagram for the team. So it's at the Boston Pride. Thank you again, Colin Coy, for your interview and best of luck in your future as the team president of the Boston Pride. Brandon, thank you and have a great day. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Colin Coy, for your interview and best of luck in your future. Thank you. You too. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.